Our environment impacts how we perceive the world around us, so it's no wonder that 3D rendering is used to help us model places, ideas, and things that don't yet exist in the physical realm, from architecture to healthcare and art. Join me today as we connect with two artists that use 3D rendering to create imaginary worlds. Rome could be <laughs> built in two hours. In two hours. <laughs> Transporting us through that liminal space between reality and the digital. Hey, Will. Good to see you. Hello. How's it going? It's going good. How are you? Good, good. I am a fan of your work. Thank you. William Uko, Willie Verse, name in the game. <laughs> Let's get into it. Sweet. Can you break down for me what 3D rendering is? For what I use it for, it's to like create like backgrounds, I create like different environments. Mm -hmm. um, it could be like architectural focused or it could be nature focused, like creating landscapes. It's being able to create three dimensional mm -hmm. objects environment, things, spaces in a software of your choice and then you're able to render it out into like a picture or like a series of pictures. Then you're able to like export that to like a photo format or a video format that you can use in like other mediums. And you can pretty much create anything. That's what's beautiful about it is that all you're bringing is yourself and the idea. That's cool. So it's like a blank canvas and exactly. you're Painting in, in 3D. Paint, that's, that's actually better than I said it. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, so like it gives you the flexibility as an independent artist, um, photographer, or filmmaker to be able to create your own sets in the virtual world. I'm curious where, where you pull from. I came here from Nigeria. Mm -hmm. um, in Nigeria, there was just more texture, more color, it was just a generally more vibrant space. It was all about how do I bring that feeling back with me in my work. And I've lived like half of my life here and mm -hmm. half of my life in Nigeria. So like everything would just be like the merge of, mm -hmm. uh, of both realities. There are elements from our reality and then there are elements that like live up here. Right, there's a lot of like um, I guess introspection in the work. First Supper, I created the sets in 3D, mm -hmm. merging real life elements with mm -hmm. 3D generated um, elements as well. I would love to hear a little bit more about First Supper. Mm -hmm. What's the story there? Where did that come from? Every year there's like a base thought or idea mm -hmm. that I try to explore. I was now thinking about like past birthdays and then I remembered like one from, I think I was five. There was like a dancing competition yeah. and I lost the dancing competition. I felt like I should win because it was my birthday. Yeah. I decided to like create that feeling that I felt of like disappointment. And then the thought of like a dinner and like how people usually break those boundaries when you're in like social settings. Mm -hmm. And it's usually through food. And so I was like, I need to, create something around the thoughts about um, social anxiety, mm -hmm. you know, birthdays. And I called it First Supper because like, for some people, it's the first time you're meeting them in that like social mm -hmm. setting. Like, it just, it sounds amazing, but it also sounds kind of complicated. Yeah. Can you give us a step-by-step -step breakdown on how you go about creating these stories? I had the idea and then I did like a mock-up in 3D, like a pre-visualization of the final product. And then after that, I started having conversations with the stylist to figure out wardrobe, spoke to the um, makeup artist as well. Anything that the character is going to interact with, that needs to be real. The table needed to be real because we're physically going to interact. But everything else, I could just like add those mm -hmm. in 3D. I'm like taking the measurements of the virtual camera and then I'm measuring that on set so that the distance from the camera to the subject in real life is the same as the distance from the camera to the subject wow. in the virtual world. So that way when like I put them in, there's like a very seamless merging of both worlds. The way that all of this seems to be coming together is that you're taking something from a feeling or a past or a memory, something that's beyond time and space, 
and you're putting it in, in this visual sort of format. I think that's one of the things that 3D allows you to do. It like takes off the limits from what you can actually visualize. Like anything that's in your head, you can you can create. And that was the whole reason why I got into it in the first place, was to just free myself in that way to pretty much create anything that's in my head. Um, you're able to create like a surreal world. Yeah, I feel like uh, I've been talking about a lot of theoretical things. It might just be easier if I show you what the process is like. There will be a photo element involved. So how are you in front of uh... Good thing I wore my threads. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. All right, <laughs> That would cool. be awesome. And we can get into it. Yay. I've marked these lines, and these are going to help me with the perspective. Like, just straight. It's good. <gasps> And then they were all. Right, so this way is it. Hello. Does this plant have a name? This is my child. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> so then it's go. All right, cool. That looks good. All right, so I've kind of highlighted the ones that I feel would really work for what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. I like that one a lot. That's, yeah. yeah, that's a strong one. I need to select you from the background. Now I'm going to open Blender, and this is the 3D software that I use. First thing I usually do is I will set up my camera. Um, so I can just like click this icon. Mm -hmm. So like with your image, I'm just gonna bring you for, to the foreground so that it's like so oh. now you're standing on something. It comes together. It's like I'm standing on a gray rug. <laughs> um, and then the next thing we can do is probably add like a background to it. We can add we can add like a cube or something. Um, bring that move that to the side. Bring that forward. Oh my goodness maybe like scale it down a bit and like increase it. And now it's a rectangle. So it's nice a rectangle, we can rotate it as well. What? Move it in the background a bit more. <laughs> a Rome could be built in two hours. In two hours. <laughs> and then we can add like a sphere, almost like we're creating like a font house. Yeah, I'm curious what are some things that you would like to see? Cause this is your world, so like. In my head, there is often <laughs> like plants mm -hmm. and agriculture mm. and like grass. Oh, we could, you we know? could add grass. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> There's like plants everywhere. <laughs> you know, let's add more plants to the foreground so that we create a bit more depth. So about now we can start matching the lighting. Okay. Um, so this is where things start to feel alive. So in Blender, they have like different types of lights as well, but we'll go with the area light because it's softer and it make more sense with this. I'm going to now change this background to red and to add in material. Mm -hmm. And then that way we get to see how well things are really like blending in together. And then this is where I now start to like get really like, I guess meticulous is the word, mm -hmm. um, with what I'm looking at. I'm like, does this feel, real so um i'm just going to like do some finishing touches to this um mm -hmm. you can like take a break and then i'll call you back and show you what the final the final okay. thing looks like sounds good thank you yeah i think i'm gonna go take a call sweet <laughs> amazing hi heba hi taylor i'm so amped to talk to you today you do so many things. You take things from your mind and you really make them intimate. Tell me a little bit more about your artistic approach. Yeah, I've been exploring with 3D meditative approaches, using it as a way to slow down time and pay attention to our surroundings and healing. Right, I'm working on 3D experience where viewers can click through and it's interactive and they'll, they hear a guided meditation in the background. I understand that you have some workshops. Can you tell me about them? I do workshops with art centers and community-based spaces and making the concepts of, of 3D animation as well as the tools of 3D animation accessible. I led a few different workshops around like 
um, meditative practices. So meditating mm -hmm. for like five minutes and then responding with a color or an image. And we use Blender, open source animation tool, to live imaginatively. And there's no right or wrong way to do it. I think doing it is the, is the act of learning experimentation. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to make art and technology accessible? Technology builds upon histories of discrimination and white supremacy. The way that we do workshops, we need to actually understand the history and the way it exists today and disrupt it through technologies of care, community, and center healing. That That is really, really cool that you kind of get to teach people collectively as a community. You're all getting to, to learn something together by going into your mind and trying to feel and visualize and, and put something in a 3D space where other people can kind of see what's going on up here as well. Yeah, and my practice with 3D and also workshop is creating spaces where we can imagine the world differently. We can imagine a more healed world. We can imagine a more healed self. And it can be as as simple as, um, I want a purple world. I, the color is calling to me today and that's what I want to step into. And that's where the power of 3D is, is really all encompassing because if we can dream it, it can happen. I want to come to your workshops now. Oh, William. Hey. <laughs> Welcome back. How was your trip? <laughs> my, my trip? <laughs> your trip. My, my trip slash call. You know what? It kind of was a trip because it, it was online. It was in the virtual space. Are you ready? I think so. All right. This is amazing. Oh my gosh, I love it. And then you did like the shadows and everything down here too. Yeah, so like I added the shadow um, when you were on your call. Okay. <laughs> I added like shadow just to like make it more realistic and like ground you in the space. Oh my goodness. Uh, yeah. You start to like really trick the brain because like you're holding a real plant, but then you now start to wonder if all these other plants are real as well. Mm -hmm. um, but that way you're able to just like blend like the real world and the virtual world together in like a harmonious way. This was a great experience. Yeah, I hope you get to do this again soon. I hope so too, you're really talented. Also your your mind is creating <laughs> all these amazing things. Um, yeah, so this was really, this was really fun. I don't want to leave, but I gotta go. <laughs> all right, that's all good. I'll see you soon. See you soon. Thank you. Thank you. That was literally a dream. I'm so glad that I got to spend time with both William and Hiva today. And I am moved by how 3D rendering can connect to digital art and the real world in so many different ways. It's also been really inspiring to see how it can be used as a visualization tool for your hopes, dreams, and those special places that live in your heart and your mind. See everyone next time.